Well, hello, everybody. You might remember in the previous episode, we used a product called Soil Flock. It was a sugary type substance, and it was two parts. So you put on part A, and in this case, we used a, a fertilizer spreader, and then you followed up right behind with part B. We continued along the perimeter of the pond, and during editing, I noticed that the sealant was being pulled out towards the center of the pond, pulled away from the bank. I thought, this is terrific. It's being pulled towards that leak. Then we noticed, uh, as it sat for a little bit and gelled, all of a sudden we could see it being pulled down, down into the pond depth, like it like a bathtub drain had been pulled and it was pulling the product from the top down towards that leak. At this point, I thought this is gonna be a terrific solution. After doing some uh, research online, I found a product called Dammit. It's uh, created and sold out of Australia. This is a terrific company to work with and order from. It's one part, so there's no part A and B. I thought that was a big plus and they had some nice marketing stuff online, and I really thought this would be a good product to try out. I bought a five liter uh, container. I thought we would concentrate on the pond dam side, the wet side of the pond dam. I truly believe that's where the leak is. And uh, let's go to that day of applying that, and I'll explain how we did it. Well, here we are. I wanted to explain how I've got this set up. I ran a string from a tree across to a bank with a stake in it. And so you should be able to see the area. I hope you can see that string. And I'm going to treat everything on the left side of that string. I spoke with a gentleman from Shalix Industries and we agreed to that we should concentrate on the wet side of that dike. So I laid out hash marks every eight feet, nine hash marks, 72 linear feet is what I was gonna concentrate. I was gonna go out about eight feet and that would cover 560 square feet. And that's what five liters, the five liter pail will cover. So I wanted to be very diligent that I got it in that area. And you can see it's just like sugar. So we'll get it all set up. We're gonna use a kayak. We're gonna go along that rope and uh, treat all this area. If you try this at home, get a good quality fertilized spreader. Not something with plastic gears. You could hear it kind of jumping over itself and it was a little frustrating. Once the product was applied to the water, you'll notice how it sits on top. Then I wanted to make reference back to the exit pipe and show you what it was, the level it was, right before applying the dammit sealers. It's pretty clear water. You're looking down about three foot deep beyond that uh, inlet. That green pipe's underwater about seven inches. So I gave up the fertilizer spreader. I'm going back to feeding the chickens technique. I think is just as effective and works a lot easier. Later I'm going to caution you on using boats to put this product on because that slime gets over everything. Wear clothes that you want to consider throwing out when you're done and clean up the kayak well. We'll take a look at that later. I don't know if you can see it on camera but it's hanging between the shoreline and the kayaks and it's just sitting there. The weather today was dead calm. Perfect day to throw something on and not have it blow all across the boat or yourself. But the weather was just perfect for applying this product today.
it's hanging right down here real nice I can see it out here a ways I don't know if you can see it or not, but when I threw it in, it, it sank like a heavy salt. It had weight to it, and it, it went down. But there's a skim on top of the water yet. It's kind of moving along the shore here. But I don't see any indication it's being sucked down or pulled, pulled down. Well, I guess now we wait. The winds are calm. Should be should be ideal conditions to have put it down. I think we followed the instructions. I'll go measure how low the water is to that inlet pipe, and we'll track it daily. Looking back, a plastic kayak may not have been the best choice. It really attached itself to that polymer material this is made of. If you use a boat, I would recommend vacuuming off the dry powder and then washing your boat because it does turn the slime. But that answers my question. I was wondering if it would bind itself to that plastic outlet pipe. And uh, the way it's binding to, to the, the uh, kayak it uh, it sure is going to bind to it. Yeah, it's just goo. So you have to wipe it with a paper towel because if you wipe it with a cloth towel it doesn't absorb into the towel and it creates a barrier. And you so it doesn't smear it absorb around. water. And you just smear it around, yeah. The paper towel, you just use it and then you can't use it for anything else. The kayak was uh, finally cleaned Let's after some elbow grease and looks like new and no, product, no problem, no damage. But when winter rolled in, the pond had leaked. Uh, here it is a picture of it in fall 17 when we put it on. A couple months later, here's a picture of it in the middle of winter after everything was frozen. It dropped seven inches. You can see the pipes exposed and it was un unsuccessful. Well, hello everybody. It is the end of May. Remember we started this project trying to seal the leak in the fall of 17 and now it's May of 18. So as you can see, the pond's still leaking. It's, this is about as high as I've been able to get it, even after the dam it sealer. We've had three inches of rain the past 10 days. I expected this to be quite a bit higher. Everything is greened up real nice. You can see the different color here. The pasture grass is to the left. Remember we seeded that? That's come in really nice. And then more of a lawn mix here right in front of the camera. Well, regarding the leak and all the pond sealants I have used, let's take a look. So there's my exit. It goes across the dike. And this is where the uh, pipe starts to exit. So you can see it. It's really running. But let's go take a look from the behind the pond dike, behind the pond dike. 
if you recall, I just threw the seed all through here, didn't pulverize it in or anything, just to uh, control erosion. It's come in very nice. Well, this is a pretty good stream. Wow. Well, if I was trying for a waterfall sound, uh, I would have achieved that. So the original leak was, let's see, right up here, a little bit higher than where it's coming out today. I think the water's just finding its way through there. You can kind of visualize how far I dug down to put that new exit pipe in, but it's finding its way through here and leaking pretty good. Oh, there's another one right here popped up. Now that is definitely in that area we were digging in to put that new exit pipe. Yeah, that's a new leak right there. You can see where it is in relationship to the vertical pipe. Well, not to put anybody's product down, but both pond sealers that I used didn't work. So I'm going to take one more swing at this. We're going to bring the excavator back, the new excavator I interviewed, and we're going to dig right through here. And we're going to put that seeping collar in. We'll dig down far enough. Now one thing we're going to do differently is we're going to pump this pond down maybe five feet. We're going to wait until August until the rains go away. Pump it down five feet. I think it's about eight or nine feet deep. Wouldn't it be interesting if we went down three or four feet and it quit running? We would at least know it's in there, wouldn't we? I think common sense would at least give us a clue that it's in that range. So the next video will come out sometime in August or September and uh, I'll make it the, the new episode. I'll reserve that number for that so it's in sequence. We'll dig it up and uh, we'll see what we're going to find. I appreciate you watching the video and follow me along on this uh, 12 or 15 month journey. Appreciate all the new subscribers and uh, we will talk to you on the pond project uh, this August or September. Thanks everybody.